All right, as I said, we're just going to go through this together. Uh, but here's going to be our starting materials. Uh, okay, now, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll put these down and we'll talk this through together. Okay, uh, by the way, what is a peroxide? A uh, peroxide, well, is when you have two oxygens bound to each other. This should strike you as a little weird. We don't see many compounds where there's two oxygens bound to each other. That's called a peroxide. I think per kind of means like above or beyond. Well, this is beyond a regular oxide. It's a peroxide because there's two oxygens bound to each other. I think we need uh, some light for this as well. Okay, um, now what's the purpose of the light is to initiate uh, a radical mechanism. So here we have to review some of the things we saw for radical mechanisms before. Um, so what happens in an in in initiation step in a radical mechanism? Just in general, what happens in an initiation step? It gets broken. A single bond gets broken. So it turns out that we're going to start here by breaking up this peroxide. And now it's very important that we're going back to using single-headed arrows because this is a radical mechanism. Everything that we've been doing for the last few weeks has used double-headed arrows because we've been moving pairs of electrons. But now we're going back to what we learned about with radical halogenation. We use single-headed arrows for a radical mechanism. So let's see if we can draw what these would look like after this step. What are they going to look like after that step just to draw the intermediate? So we get two of these. By the way, remember that radical mechanisms don't affect charges. So one nice thing is we won't have to worry about charges here. Uh, and we're going to actually ignore the fact that we made two of these. The important thing is that we made an RO that's radical. All right. Uh, and now we're going to have a uh, propagation step. Oops. I guess I should have drawn this. Is, this was our starting material. I left out that this was a double bond. Um, so this is, uh, this is the reactive atom, so it has to react with somebody. Uh, well, it turns out that what it's going to do over here is steal the hydrogen. If you remember, this is what happened in the first propagation step for radical halogenation. Uh, if I remember correctly, the, in the first propagation step, the radical stole a hydrogen. And that's how you draw the arrows going into like... Remember that when you're forming a new bond, you want the two arrows pointing towards each other for radical mechanisms. So this is what the radical mechanism would look like. So let's draw what the product would look like here. Remember to put the tail on the bond. What we're doing here is we're taking one of the electrons from the bond and using it to uh, form a new bond here. And we're taking the other electron from the bond and putting it on the bromine. drawing the electrons that are moving around here. All right, so here's the intermediates from that step. Um, so we formed a new oxygen-hydrogen bond, and now this bromine has the unpaired electron. OK, so who's the reactive atom now? Bromine. bromine. So now we're finally in position to attack this alkene over here. Well, we know the reactive electrons here are in the pi bond. The, these electrons would like to form sigma bonds because sigma bonds are more stable. So this is when it becomes a triangle? Uh, yeah, we're actually not, we're still not there. So we're still not going to form that cyclic intermediate. When is that? Is that oxymorization or whatever? Is that? When is it when it forms the cyclic? We'll, we'll see that soon enough. There's a couple of examples. One example, though, is when you have, say, Br2 attacking. This two of the same halogen. Okay. Sorry. OK. Um, now, which of these two electrons is going to attack the bromine? And which is going to form a radical? 
So one of the, we're going to end up with the radical either on the left or on the right. So where should we end up with the radical? On the left. On the left because it's more substituted. It's more substituted. We know that just like substitution stabilizes carbocations, substitution also stabilizes radicals. So we're going to take this electron and use it to form the bond with the bromine. And this electron is just going to turn into an unpaired electron on this carbon over here. So let's see if we can draw that intermediate. that the bromine is forming a bond with this carbon. So we should draw that bromine over there. All right, so remember that when you have two arrows pointing towards each other in a radical mechanism, that indicates the formation of a new bond. And who's forming the bond? This carbon over here and this bromine. Sure did. All right. Thank you. Uh, so I would put that in here. Um, why does substitution stabilize this radical? Oh, because the alkyl. Something about the alkyl breaks stabilizing. But why do they stabilize it? Now, is this electron poor or electron rich? It's really yeah. electron poor because it's one electron short of an octet, uh, right? Uh, it's, uh, it only has seven uh, electrons around it instead of eight. This is electron poor, so would we stabilize it by surrounding it by electron donors or withdrawers? And what are alkyl groups? Electron donors. And remember, why are they donors? Well, they just have more electrons to donate than hydrogens, say. Alkyl groups are more electron donating than hydrogens, um, to give a very simple explanation because they've got more hydrogens. Uh, they've got more electrons. All right, uh, so this is going to be an important principle. Stable, um, Substitu what, uh, substitution stabilizes carbocations, radicals, and alkenes. That's something we should now make a note of. Substitution stabilizes carbocations, radicals, and alkenes. Substitution stabilizes carbocations, radicals, and alkenes. What do I mean by substitution? I mean substitution with alkyl chains, substitution with carbon chains instead of hydrogens. The more carbon chains you're attached to and the fewer hydrogens, the more stable a carbocation, radical, or alkene would be. Well, this is the more substituted over here. Um, we already know why substitution stabilizes radicals and carbocations, because they're both electron poor. A carbocation is missing two electrons, and a radical is missing one electron, but they're still electron poor, so they want to be surrounded by electron donating alkyl groups. Uh, we haven't explained why substitution stabilizes uh, alkenes, and uh, that won't be a good use of our time today, but maybe later we'll see that. But for now, we'll just memorize that substitution stabilizes all three of those things. Okay, um, now, um, is this a stereocenter? Yeah. No. All right, so we should have been thinking about stereochemistry over here. Um, so are we going to get one product or two? Two. Because we're attacking someone trigonal planar, and it's a stereocenter, so I should have one picture where this is on a wedge. And the methyl group is on the dash. And one where the methyl group is on the wedge. And the bromine is on the dash. So we still have to watch out for when we're forming uh, stereocenters here. Is it wrong if you just have one where like, the methyl is just a line, and on one of the bromine is a wedge, and on the other one it's a dash? Uh, yeah, that is wrong. Uh, and the reason is, uh, well, uh, actually, I guess it wouldn't be wrong here because then you'd be saying, so you're saying, could you draw it like this? Yeah. In fact, that would be that. better. Actually, I guess I'm not thinking this clearly. What we, we should draw it like this because we can just say the hidden hydrogen is on the wedge of the dash. Yeah. So actually, your way was right and my way was wrong. Uh, it doesn't make sense to have a wedge and a dash pointing so far apart from each other. So yeah, what I had on the board was wrong. Um, we should fix it. So here we have the bromine on the wedge, and here the bromine's on the dash. 
And in this case, the hidden hydrogen is on the dash, and in this case, the hidden hydrogen is on the wedge. So yeah, what I had before was, was not a good way to draw that. This 